Hi guys, we are trying this again. I am going to start by asking Sam to join us. And let's see. Oh, there's Sam. Hello. Yes, one out of two. Yes, okay, now I'm going to get Alex. And I think this could possibly work. Here's fingers crossed. In the meantime, will you say Sassanach? Do you know what? Why don't I say Sassanach until until we get the technology working? But yes, Sassanach. There we go. Yes. Sam, it's eight o'clock in Scotland, so it's lunch in my brain. It's eight eight o'clock somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I was trying to join. I, you know, technology, but we made it. I hear you. Thank you so much for taking the time, guys. So um, it sounds like besides. being the founder of a double gold winning whiskey company that you're also on a TV show because you've got lots of fans that are joining on and uh, we don't usually have this many fans. We have 11,000 people watching right now. Fantastic. So, it's the yeah, whiskey. well, it's, it's the whiskey. They're, they're all fans of the whiskey. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely, you know, obviously I work on, on this TV show Outlander and, it, and in a way, you know, working in Scotland um, inspired me to, to, to create my own whiskey with Obviously, a name that um, is synonymous with the show, but also synonymous with you know Scottish heritage and culture. Yeah, we got a lot of questions about what was the what what is the meaning behind the name. Can you explain a little bit about that for us? Yeah, yeah, I can. Well, in uh, Scotch Gaelic, um, it basically uh, was rather a derogatory term for an outsider or an English English person. Um, but during the show, Outlander as well, um, it's a, it actually uses a term of endearment. And then looking at Scotland as well, you know, Scotland is such a forward thinking place. It's, um, it's very welcoming. Um, and we wanted to include people. It's a very inclusive place. So it just kind of worked with the name, I think. It just felt um, it, it had the heritage, but it also sent the message across that, you know, we want to be inclusive. If you are the outsider, you have never tried whiskey before, you can then be the Sassanac and, uh, and all are welcome. Fantastic. And what does it mean for you guys to just be released and win two double gold medals two years in a row? Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty it's good, a, huh? It's an honor. It's, it's humbling. And it's, uh, you know, it has been quite a, you know, a lot of work behind it, mostly by this guy drinking too many different <laughs> blends and different creations. But it's been definitely a blessing and we are so appreciative of it. And, 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 uh, it's our first release, The Spirit of Home, which, which ties in pretty much also to, to your question why the Sassana came to be. It's essentially, you know, uh, uh, Sam's heart, but also the concept, the idea behind this was being as inclusive, as welcoming as possible. And then the Sassana essentially represents, you know, outsiders welcome. Uh, we all are outsiders, depending <laughs> to a certain extent where we are at, t- at times. And this specific uh, uh, launch was was very personal. I remember first time we, we discussed this with Sam. You know, it literally mm. started a Scottish guy and a German guy go to a bar. <laughs> that kind of a story, but it was you know you know we were talking about all the different things, and you know he he he, he was very very um, noticeable that this is personal. So if you wanted to work on a spirits brand, first it has to be whiskey, and it has to be whiskey you have to respect and understand and appreciate the institution that Scotch whiskey is. And it's, it's, it was something that when we early on started, he made it very clear to me that uh, this is not a business opportunity for me. If I want a business opportunity, I would sign any endorsement deal that presents itself to me and I would do any of those stuff. If I do my own brand, my own labor, it has to be A, celebrate my heritage, my culture, be as inclusive as possible, welcome. Uh, that's not like you know, foreigners like yourself, everyone that wants to enjoy and share my culture. And, and, and that's how it all get to be. And then, you know, one of the first reasons why also the whiskey came uh, as, as a f- obvious choice of launch is, you know, I think Sam used to always say when he travels so much on his trips and on his businesses, um, you know, <laughs> every dram whiskey would bring him back home. So he wanted that. Yeah. He would get at it, you know, yeah. that's it, it was, it's absolutely, as I said, it's something that, you know, that I do travel a lot and it's, it's a, like a very emotional drink. It's one of the only drinks that you have that when you, you drink it, it, it gives you an emotional reaction. And for me, it's about Scotland. And, and it was, it was, I was living in London actually. And uh, it was the first time I started drinking Scotch whiskey. And I just had this really emotional reaction to when I drank it. It just reminded me of home. And 
then, you know, whenever I travel the world now, you know, I do, I'd, I'd like to have a, a, a glass of whiskey and uh, it does, it takes you back home. But as Alex said as well, Alex actually was, um, was as we like to call him, a whiskey virgin uh, or, or wow. with his accent, his accent, a whiskey virgin. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he was like the guinea pig of this really, you know, he had never, never really drank and never really tried whiskey. And I took him to this little Scottish bar in Glasgow and there was uh, a little band playing Scottish music and we were talking about it. And I think um, just that, that sort of coming together of people and of stories um, of our culture. And it just, it felt like, yeah, it, it's, it's a big ask, but something we wanted to capture and, and really, you know, people that haven't tried whiskey to give them something accessible, but also something we're really proud of. And the stories, I think, uh, what, what, I mean, it was, it was a little bit more emotional also at that moment when you first try, I mean, it was with a few drinks and, you know, the, it was a very typical Scottish pub. It was really everything that you picture what a Scottish pub uh, should be. And then all these different people, different musicians, different artists would come. They would start playing instruments. Some already told me, watch, you know, they, they, they didn't rehearse this. They just start going off each other and do that. And while you hear this amazing Scottish folk music and Sam is talking all about these different regions and different, uh, you know, uh, uh, climates, different landscapes and, uh, you know, how it affects his whiskey from the, it was just really poetry for me. And that's why I, you know, the, the, the experience with, the, the, with that to start something was just different than, you know, accepting whiskey as a spirit uh, rather than an institution that it was that the way Sam, you know, I think everyone should have the opportunity to try their first whiskey with Sam. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> that would be nice. You, it's going to be a very, very busy pub, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's just amazing. It just, it becomes so much more than, than, than what picture of whiskey to be or scotch to be it's, it's you know you you get to uh, know a little bit more of the culture, and that's something that was important to him and it was important to us from the get-go you know i'm giving more of myself than just my name or my likeness to brand so can you tell me a little bit about the bottle design it's it, it is a, also yeah. a metal winner and it is so beautiful it is something that definitely yeah. deserves to be in someone's bar someone's home uh right on yeah play. How did you come up with the logo? And um, is this a unicorn? It is. It is a unicorn, and it is it is Scotland's national animal. Now, I, I, most people would be like, wow. most people don't even know that. They're like, what Scottish? It's a unicorn, but it is. It's this mythical, magical creature. It's a very unique creature. Um, traditionally, it's on the coats of coat of arms in uh, in British, um, you know, in the sort of royal family, etc. Um, but it's the only animal that can kill a lion. Uh, is this mythical creature and there's just something about the unicorn it just felt it felt strong it felt unique it felt individual um and i think that you know the character of it is just um it's quite passionate uh and just really symbolized everything that we were going for you know we're going for something that's unique and, and i think just going into then talking about the liquid it was that we wanted to create something that you know we'd seen i'd seen so many great asian whiskies great blends out there you know scotch uh, single malt is obviously celebrated a great deal, but actually, in a way, blended whiskey was kind of looked down upon. And I wanted to create something that was uh, quintessentially Scottish, but also, you know, had the characteristics of those Asian blends that were smooth and um, accessible. And um, yeah, so that's what we went for. And then the bottle, yeah, probably came out of Alex's mad mind of creativity. But um, we we sat down for a long time, didn't we, Alex? You know, we were looking at mood boards. We really every stage of this whole process, you know, we, we sort of went into the design process of how we want it to look. We wanted to look, make it look like something someone would want to keep on their shelf, you know, whether they want to stick a candle in it or, uh, or some lights or whatever, you know, it just, it, we wanted it to look, you know, as unique as the liquid itself. I feel like there were everything that we did with the blend, with the design of the glass, with everything, there always these three check boxes, um, uh, economically reasonable, uh, very expensive, and then you know what uh, 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 complicated. And I felt we always check the complicated and very expensive options <laughs> because it was just, paid off. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's something that is a testimony to to absolute Sam. I started this. I'm actually 20 years old. This gray hair came uh, going through the blending process. <laughs> this yeah, but it was just you know, we, God bless our, our master blender. He he really really had patience uh, with, with us. But we started, I mean, as Sam said, they're approachable, you know, so, so you know, the, we, at the beginning, the, the suggestion was, you know, low alcohol volume and 
But, you know, as we went through the process and we kept pushing back and we sampled, kept pushing back and I, I had to be the bearer of bad news. But I think it took us almost, what, almost two years to get the right blend. I mean, it was just yeah. really a complicated process. But it, as you said, it paid off. We were proud that it's all natural colors. We were proud that we didn't filter it. We were proud that we launched it 46%. But with the right blend, still the smoothness, still the approachable. And and, and it, it was, uh, and you know, you guys, you know, awarding us with, with amazing prestigious prizes. It's it just paid off and it's truly has been a great start for us and we just can't wait for the next step. Yeah, we were so proud. To, uh, that, that, that leads me to something that everyone is asking, which is when it, will it be available worldwide? When will it be available in the US, Germany, Argentina? I got questions from all over the world saying, please, please, when will this be available? <laughs> yeah, I'll let, I'll let Alex get into the, the details because it is extremely difficult. And, and to be honest, Alex, it is the workhorse of this whole company. and really has managed to get us into the US, haven't you, Alex? But, but uh, the work unicorn, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're the unicorn. <laughs> Julie, I mean, there's, uh, you're familiar with that, Amanda, obviously, of the pretty system and the complication. One of the things is, is again, when we started this, we wanted uh, um, to own every aspect of it. We are own and we wanted to do it right. But uh, one of the challenges we faced, obviously, in the US is that we, I mean, it sounds a little bit perhaps as, as, as bragging about it, but it's absolutely not. We just sold out so quick that it would not allow us to do any, you know, price posting or different state application, any of that. We started with the initial 10,000 release on uh, Burns Night, and then obviously the COVID uh, situation happened. And then uh, shortly after, with some delays, we released again with, you know, uh, this time with uh, a bigger release. And we sold out again within 48 hours. And it always leaves you so little time to plan bigger goals. So, yeah, I mean, we have uh, you know, uh, 10,000 cases coming in August, uh, uh, which we are super excited about. But uh, once we go through that, within the time frame of last year's initial release and COVID restrictions and shutdowns considered, within a time frame of 12 months, we will be hitting almost at 15, 20,000 cases in only online uh, uh, sold through a reservoir so far and, and, and only uh, five states and occasionally some states that could be shipped to. So it's been very, very uh, 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 amazing, but at the same time difficult to plan accordingly how we enroll other states. Thankfully, we're having great conversations with, with, with great people, great distributors and, 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 and great retailers. And uh, now that we, we can uh, assure... Uh, your release of this period uh, uh, of home edition, we can uh, address this more. We released in the UK and, and, and from the UK, they could actually ship to uh, many European countries, but uh, as uh, luck have it, uh, Brexit happened and then started. we started facing that complication. So we, we, we had a, a very uh, challenging start. But uh, uh, thankfully, the stock that we had was pretty much sold out so quick that we didn't have to ultimately pay the price for that. Uh, we just had yeah. delays, the only thing. But March uh, is the, the next release. And after that, uh, we will have this beautiful uh, uh, Spirits of Home Edition release annually uh, between ten and 12,000 cases. And we are working diligently on our next adventures in the Spirits world. Yes. So just, I see, I'm seeing all these comments here. There's uh, everyone's, you know, people all around the world. They're all asking. And yeah, as, as Alex says, you know, we have a new release in August in, in North America. And um, it's obviously available in the UK. And um, we are working. Alex is working diligently on, on the rest <laughs> of the world. And we're getting there, actually. We've got some really exciting news coming. So, um, yeah, just keep, keep, uh, um, keep watching our, our social media. I, I just tried to see some of the comments you said. Pay attention, Sam. I just see hearts and I love you. I love you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we are very lucky because we, when we hold our competition, we ask for a few bottles uh, to come so that uh, all of our judges can have a taste. And we have one bottle that's left in the Ooh. original packaging. And we are going to put this um, as one of our giveaways, which I'm sure everyone will be very, very excited about. So Wonderful. that will be coming yeah. up soon. Um, and then I also got a lot of questions about if there's plans. I know you have a, a strong tie to Scotland if there's plans to do any other kind of spirits in the Sasanak family? 
Well, that would be telling, wouldn't it? But I think, um, yes, to, needless to say, we, we have a lot of plans. Um, Alex doesn't like to sleep and, uh, and I do like um, unique spirits. So yeah, we, we've got a lot of different ideas. We obviously want to establish the spirit of home and you know, make that more readily available. And it will be you know, um, later this year. Uh, and then as Alex said, you know, sort of annually, there'll be annual releases of it. So, um, but yes, we've got some really fun stuff planned. So uh, get, get ready to get your hands on some really good, good um, places. Liquid. Might be considered as the Sassanacs. We will be the uh, so the, the the goal is for us to establish a great branded, uh, reliable, uh, in quality taste and experience uh, brand. Uh, whiskey was obviously the the launch uh, and and the most important for us. That is here to stay. The Sassanac whiskey is here to stay, and hopefully, it'll continue <laughs> to win hearts and minds and awards. And uh, but in the meantime, we are working on a couple of projects we're very excited about, uh, and, and and you know one stimulates our nature of as storytellers. So we will capture the unique spirits around the world. But uh, the other is just you know not only the spirits we meet, but the spirits we create during this amazing uh, experiences and journey. So it's you know a lot of travel, a lot of drinking. It's a little bit tough life to live, but it's, tough. it's a yeah. tough job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. It's, okay, I've got a, few, a more talk to, uh, few more questions for you. What is your favorite, Sam and Alex, favorite non-Scotch cocktail? Oh, boy. Ooh. Wow. Non-Scotch cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let Alex think about this one. I think, I mean, do you know, it, it, for me, it's all about, you know, just the, the quality of the, you know, the, the juice. And so I, I guess it has to be a classic, right? It has to be a classic. Um, martini, um, probably a gin actually, a gin martini, but a vodka as well. I just think I love my my alcohol, you know, quite clean, not too many ingredients. And I think you know when, when you have a really good ingredients, you don't need to uh, add loads of mixers. So, um, and it also starts a good party, a, ma a martini, doesn't it? Or ends one. Yeah, he <laughs> he went there. He had a martini, so I have to say, yeah, a vodka martini, but still. You, he's, 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 he's vodka, I'm, I'm gin. Got it. Perfect. Okay, what would be uh, your, la your favorite last meal if you had uh, a glass of Sassanac? What would you pair it with? Uh, your favorite, yes. favorite, favorite thing to pair it with? You know, I actually tried the other day uh, uh, a small duck with the Sassanac, and it was pretty good, mm. rising good, but crunchy. Yeah. And it, was, it was really delicious and i think something about the smokiness of the smoked duck i i was initially thinking of smoked salmon with sasna but i tried the smoked duck and the, that was a good pairing you should try smoked duck with sasna smoked duck with sasna you know i think i mean i think sasna could probably go with a lot of things it is you know quite balanced it's quite sweet um though there are some spicy notes in it but to be honest it's got to be something scottish right and i was going to say haggis haggis like traditionally <laughs> i was going to say it but actually I'm a bit of a breakfast fan and I love porridge and uh, traditionally wow. in Scotland, we do sometimes put whiskey into your porridge and um, that is just the best way to start any day. So I think yeah, you've just what, started not a to new like? trend. I think yeah. you've just started a new trend. We're going to put can all I, the, the scotch there, in our oatmeal now. I can I reveal a very deep secret that nobody heard before? We oh. actually started talking about porridge because we have this health and wellness platform for fundraising and and Sam created this amazing porridge recipe booklet and we were really paying attention to starting something a porridge related brand and uh, you know in terms of protein uh, bars and then porridge and everything but during all the conversation we would have a drum of whiskey so we said you know what I think we have to do the right thing here but yeah create a nice pairing right okay and then last question is Sam, what music would your character listen to while drinking some Sassanac? And what list, what what music do you what song do you like to listen to while while uh, listening and uh, drinking Sassanac? I, so you're talking about Outlander, yes. Character. Ah, okay. Um, um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, to be honest, again, you know, I think going back to like the first day that Alex and I really. Um, kind of the concept of Sassanac came around. We were in this bar, a Scottish bar, and uh, you know this this group of people are in there, and they're all you know, what, what, what is essentially called a Kaylee. It's a gathering of people, a gathering of storytelling of music, um, and that that sort of community aspect 
um, the sharing of, yeah, the sharing of knowledge and, um, and good times. So that would be it. It'd have to be in a bar, a Scottish bar, the musicians in the corner, and we're sharing a large, a large sass night. Fantastic. Alex, what about you? Yeah, I mean, aside that, absolutely. It tastes so much better when you listen to Scottish pop music or Kay Kaylee. But myself and my time, it got to be Miss Simone or some John Coltrane. So. Oh, nice. No. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, classic. You can't go wrong with either. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time. And um, yes. we have this baby coming up on our. And congratulations on your many successes. Oh. oh, now you're right. Congratulations and on your many successes, and uh, we can't wait to see what happens next for Sasanak. Thank you so perfect. much. Something else uh, we are sending to you is the is, is, uh, uh, Sasanak class and the beautiful Sasanak tartan scarf that you can add to your giveaway. Oh, wow. Ah, Thank you great. so much. So we'll Fantastic. Send it. Fantastic. Thank I think I might enter that competition myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so All much. Right, I'm thanks, glad we guys. actually made this happen. Thank yeah, you. and thanks to, thanks to you guys, guys for the awards. We're really proud. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye, <laughs> guys.